Hello everybody, welcome back to V-Games Gone Wild. Thank you very much for coming back for another playthrough. Today we're going to be playing a game called Army Gals. It's a game I found on Steam and I read the comments on it and it looks alright. Uh, I guess a lot of Ichi, a lot of story, a lot of choices, and a lot of endings. So, I guess we're just going to play and we're going to see what happens. I guess there's consequences too, so if we get bad stuff, bad stuff. If we get good stuff, good stuff. I'm not going to go back and change anything, and we're going to play straight through no matter what decisions we make. So this is going to be my playthrough of Army Gals. Let's see how it goes. Okay, it might be that still life and reading, but that's cool. Let's do this. Okay, Kyle. The Aggressive Rehabilitation Missionary Youth Program. Whatever that means. What a mouthful. Behind me, the train noisily rolls off. Gaining speed as it vanishes off into the distance, leaving me stranded. I shift nervously from one foot to the other. What if they don't show up? Actually, that might be kind of cool. Better than roughing it out in the woods for weeks. I already miss my cell phone. A few minutes pass and the other passengers had gotten off at the stop have all departed the station. Everyone except myself who stands here awkwardly with my backpack and luggage. Did I get the date wrong? Did I get off at the wrong stop? I'm going to be so dead, they'll never believe it was just an accident. Deciding to wait around a little longer, I wander the station listlessly. While boredly rereading the signs on the wall, I hear a peach peeling screech of tires. I glance up, watching the car as its doors open. Finally! These must be the people I've been waiting for. Kyle, right? I'm Shelton. He suddenly interrupted by a noisy chant. Fresh meat, fresh meat, fresh meat. A chanting woman strides up next to him. She's wearing biker overalls with her cleavage in plain sight. To my credit, I drag my eyes back to the man talking to me. Shelton glowers at her. Will you stop? Sorry we were a little late. The hotel we booked is further out than we were expecting. He thrusts his hand out at me, sighing as he tries again for an introduction. I'm Shelton, camp leader at the Aggressive Rehabilitation Missionary Youth Program. We at the Aggressive Rehabilitation Missionary Youth Program believe that all youths need a guiding hand. The history of the Aggressive Rehabilitation Missionary Youth Program. Uh, it says A R M Y P. Army P? You. <laughs> oh my god! If I have to hear you say that stupid speech one more time, I'm gonna knock your teeth in! The girl gives Shelton a scowling look. Unknown woman. Just abbreviate the name! We can't abbreviate. No one will take it seriously. Well, whose fault is that? My brain has been short-circuited by the curvy, sporty woman, who looks just dangerous enough to be interesting. She must notice my stare, meeting her gaze with an arched eyebrow that sends a jolt right down my spine. A wolfish grin spreads across her face. Got something to say, fresh meat? Uh, uh... Are you one of the students from the camp? I blurt out my first assumption, and they both look at me with wide-eyed stares. I've messed up. Oh, great. She isn't a student. This is Cheryl, a fellow camp counselor. She's a counselor? I distinctly hear him hiss through his teeth in the least inconspicuous way, who is clearly setting a bad example for the children with that devil-may-care getup. Oh, please. And I hate it when you call them children. They're certainly not kids. Right? She thrusts her hand out at me with a wink. Trying to figure out if I'm in some kind of flip-flop, good, bad guy, bad guy routine, I shake her hand. I rack my brain for something to say. You can counsel me anytime, or hi, I'm Kyle. You can counsel me anytime. Her eyes widen, but I don't know if it's because she's stunned or impressed. WAP! 
Oh, she slapped him. A hand collides so suddenly with my face that I stumble around. It wasn't the thin, sharp slap of a girl's hand. No, I just got the spit knocked out of my mouth by the big, beefy hand of Shelton. <laughs> oh, he... <laughs> he's already beaten him. Rubbing my cheek indignantly, I look back at the two. I don't think everyone... Oh, I don't think anyone has ever honestly slapped me before. That's exactly the kind of attitude you're not going to have around here. Leave the boy alone. It's not his fault. I'm irresistible. He'll learn. Restraint in the face of temptation is as good a lesson as any. Cheryl rolls her eyes. Well, fun as tormenting fresh meat here is, you should probably remember that we left three other delinquents in the car. You do have the keys, right? Shelton breaks out in a sweat. Of course I've got the keys. Three delinquents? I try to peek past them, but Shelton so suddenly blocks up my vision. I almost shrink back, but he just takes my bags. Going to put this in the car with the rest, but there's not enough room for all three of us in there. Hope you're okay being tied down to the top. <laughs> How good is your finger strength? What? Well, it gets bumpy, and if the rope comes loose... No, I mean, I have to ride on top of the car? You should know that delinquents don't get the same luxuries as everyone else does. Besides, think of the legroom. I'm not a delinquent. Sounds like something a delinquent would say. I sputter stupidly in protest, but I can't find a comeback. Shelton slams the trunk of the car door closed. Everything ready to go? I sigh. Do I really have to ride on top of the car? Shelton looks at me like I just grew another head. What have you been telling the kid? Cheryl just bats her eyes innocently, then walks away. You're with her. We'll head on to the campsite, but it's a long way to go by motorbike. You'll spend the night at the closest motel to the woodlands, then meet up with us tomorrow. I'm actually going to ride with her? As if reading my thoughts, Cheryl loudly revs the bike. Come on, are you ready? I'm going to die, aren't I? Or let's do this. Pfft, let's do this! That's the spirit! The bike rumbles in the background. Have you ever ridden before? No. Perfect! I get to take the Fresh Meats bike virginity! Don't worry, darling. I'll be gentle. I straddle the bike behind her, trying to figure out how to sit on the seat without touching her. There's no such option, though, and she grabs me and pulls me forward. Hang on tight! She puts my hands around her waist before I can object. Before I can say anything, we speed off through the town and leave the car behind. At least I haven't gotten sick yet! Every tight curve makes my stomach do flips as we go around them. It's like a roller coaster, except I'm not strapped into anything, and the ride has lasted over an hour. They were, really weren't kidding when they said it was far off. Luckily, Cheryl doesn't try to talk much over the constant roar of the bike. The sun is setting when we leave the main road and end up in a small secluded town. My whole body stiff from sitting tight against her back, clinging for dear life. Here we are. A temporary home sweet home. My legs wobble uncertainly as I get off the bike, actually grateful to be standing in the shadow of a seedy motel. Anything on flat ground with no sharp curves or innocent pedestrians to run over is great. I'm going to check us in. If you're going to barf, do it away from the bike. I'm not going to barf. I'd probably asphyxiate on my own vomit before I'd have the nerve to throw up in front of Cheryl. All right, rest up. We still have a ways to go tomorrow, and it'll be off-road for a lot of it. I want to collapse in a heap. And I would, but there's only one bed, and my brain is officially flipped into off-mode. Doesn't she realize? It turns out, I'm the one who doesn't realize something. Finally spotting the stained futon crammed against the wall. 
It's got so many unidentified dark spots on it, it looks like something someone might have been murdered there. Oh well. I moved to collapse onto it. Are you going to sleep there, or are you joining me in the bed? <laughs> she takes her change of clothes and hovers in the bathroom doorway, glancing back at me with a raised eyebrow. Join her? My brain launches into overdrive while I stand between the couch and the bed. This has to be some kind of test. If I fail, she might try to fist fight me or something. But she was acting pretty flirty earlier. There was definitely something there. Unless that was what, just my wishful ego hearing what it wanted to hear. Wouldn't be the first time, actually. Her expression shifts to annoyance as I stand there in numb silence. Fortune rewards the bold. But this woman is nuts and a counselor. So unless Fortune is her stripper name, I don't think that rule applies. I open my mouth, not even sure what's going to come out of it. Oh, so I get to choose to sleep with her or take the couch. So it might be a test. If it's a test and I say sleep with her, then I get kicked out or I get in trouble or it's game over, right? Or I can take the couch and be the nice guy. Pfft, we're sleeping. We're going to do it. We're going to take the chance. I'll sleep with you. Really? Oh, she's blushing! Ah! Determined to stand my ground now, I sit on the edge of the bed. You offered... I may be stupid fresh meat, but I'm not stupid enough to say no. <laughs> her eyes light up with interest, her smirk growing. I thought you might be a little daring, but I'll admit I'm surprised. Pleasantly? She laughs, but not her usual cruel cackle. Oh no, she's into it! You bet! She turns and vanishes into the bathroom, at which point my whole body turns into spaghetti. Did I really just flirt with the counselor on my first night? I'm probably going to be expelled or arrested or something. Is that possible? But before I can second guess it, she appears again. Uh oh! I, uh, um... She holds up a finger to shush me. Has anyone ever told you that you sound a lot less cute when you're grunting like a Neanderthal? Savage. I'm no match for this girl. What am I even doing? Oh no, they're gonna... Come on, don't make it weird. But it is weird. She gives me a look that tells me I'm not helping my case. I don't have my overnight clothes. They're in the bag Shelton took with him. Well, good riddance. What do you need clothes for? She grins at me. Did she plan for this? Can you at least try to not look so uncomfortable? Haven't you ever had a one night stand before? Uh, no. Oh, well, as long as you can keep your mouth shut, nobody else has to know. Wow. <laughs> well, I don't know how much time has passed. All I know is that I'm left battered, bruised, and bruised somehow. <laughs> <laughs> but even the places that hurt feel good. The mark on my neck stings. The scratches on my back won't be going away for a while. <laughs> I don't even remember when she put half these things on me. It's all one steamy hot blur. I glance over, seeing Cheryl slumped back under the covers, and she lets out a bright, breathy sigh. She doesn't offer to talk or touch afterwards, apparently having gotten what she's come for. Exhausted, I slide down under the covers too, still reeling from the bizarre situation. She's completely worn me out. I don't even have time to think about what just happened before my eyes close and everything fades away. Up and at a maggot! What? Huh? I practically launch myself off the couch in confusion, still half asleep and holding my blanket to myself. Wh what? If you think you get the luxury of sleeping in past the crack of dawn, think again! I blink towards the bright sunlight spilling through the window. But it's already past... Are you sassing me, fresh meat? 